Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Canon 1DX Mark III versus the Canon C500 Mark II. So for this video, I actually had the chance to link up with my buddy Armando. Um, he's actually a C500 Mark II owner and uh, I actually just got my 1DX Mark III in. So I hit him up and said, hey, like, do you wanna do some sort of like a little shootout with the uh, 1DX Mark III versus the C500 Mark II? Just kind of for fun and kind of for testing to kind of learn the strengths and weaknesses of both cameras. It's not like there's like one is good, one is bad. They're both amazing cameras. But what I was really curious about was to see uh, where the, str the strengths are of which camera and where the weaknesses are too. So that's kind of what we're gonna take a look at in this video. So like I mentioned, it's really just kind of more of a first look at both cameras. Uh, if you are interested in seeing different camera comparisons, I definitely plan on using the 1DX Mark III a lot over the next couple of months. And I'm gonna be bringing it on a few jobs with me uh, where the C200 is actually gonna be my main camera. So I'm gonna be kind of get some real world experience and seeing what I think of the cameras in a real life situation and not just sort of like on a test shoot. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and keep an eye out for that one. Okay, so the four main things we're gonna take a look at in this video are the raw image quality, the second thing is gonna be the slow motion. The third thing is gonna be the user experience. And the last thing is gonna be, is the C500 Mark II really worth 10 grand more than the 1DX Mark III? Okay, so first thing is the raw image quality. So I'm gonna put up a couple images here. Uh, it's gonna be the A cam and B cam. And then if you guys stick around, I'll, I'll let you know which camera is which. But I'm gonna be honest, when I was editing this piece together, for, in terms of raw image quality, it's pretty crazy how similar they are. Like for a camera that costs six grand and a camera that costs 16 grand, in a lot of these situations, I think if to, especially to the untrained eye, if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, I think you'd have a really tough time telling the difference. So in terms of image quality, uh, dynamic range, both cameras are outstanding. I mean, the 1DX Mark III, it really punches way above its weight class. For being a DSLR, I honestly couldn't believe that this image was coming out of the DSLR. I mean, for something that that's not even necessarily designed for video in the first place, I mean, it's really more designed as a photo camera. It's pretty crazy to see how well it does against a camera that has an outstanding image quality, like a C500 Mark II. So the times that I really noticed the C500 Mark II pulling away from the 1DX Mark III were when we had to use ND filters, like six stops or more. So. Uh, the filters that I was using were the Polar Pro uh, six stop solid ND filters, and those are like really good uh, filters. But you'll see in this shot right here, the 1DX Mark III looks a lot cleaner, and you can tell like the blacks, they don't look raised at all. They look, uh, I mean, it just looks like a really solid image. Whereas the 1DX Mark III here, you can tell the blacks look kind of raised, the shadows look a little bit pulled up. And my thoughts are that that might be something to do with the ND filter. So you'll see again in this scene right here, um, when we went out to the beach, you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a green cast on the image. And I mentioned that in a video uh, that I made before, but, in, and I was actually using a variable ND filter for this because we were sort of in like a, the sun was coming down and we wanted to get as many shots as possible quickly. So um, we were just sort of like trying to run a gun. And in that situation, you really need a, a variable ND filter. Okay, so second category is slow motion. Uh, in terms of slow motion, I mentioned this in my last 1DX Mark III video. In my opinion, the 1DX Mark III has the best 120 frames per second out of any Canon camera, including the cinema cameras. Uh, and the only one I haven't shot with is the C700, and I don't think anybody shoots on those, so it doesn't really matter. But the image quality with the 1DX Mark III, the full frame, it just looks so nice. I mean, it, it's really, listen, people buy full frame cameras because they like the look of full frame cameras. With the C500 Mark II, that's really kind of like the one thing that they left out. Like it has seriously every single feature except the 120 frames per second because it's super 16 crop and it doesn't have autofocus. The 1DX Mark III does have autofocus and it's full frame. And in my opinion, it just looks a lot cleaner. The image really doesn't have any noise at all. Um, I know some people made some comments on my last video about the 1DX Mark III having some noise in the 120p and in that specific instance it did uh, and a lot of that was just kind of due to how it was colored um, and I was just sort of learning the camera for the first time but if you see these two cameras side by side the C500 Mark II and the 1DX Mark III you can kind of tell I mean as far as I in my opinion goes I think the 1DX Mark III is the clear winner here. Okay so third category is user experience. 
This category is where the C500 Mark II just completely smashes the 1DX Mark III. This is really why people pay this amount of money for the camera. Uh, in terms of features, I mean, you're getting things like built-in ND filters, you're getting pro-level audio control because you've got XLR inputs. You can just run your mic off phantom power. So if you have something like a Rode NTG3, you can just plug that thing in and you never have to worry about charging it. So that's definitely a nice feature. Like if you're on set, it's just one less thing to worry about. Another thing is the C500 Mark II has pro-level connections. So what does that mean, pro-level connections? Well, for starters, it's got a full-size HDMI, which is nice, but on most professional sets, they're not really using HDMI they're using SDI. So it's got a 12G SDI, which can send a 4K 10-bit 422 signal to an external recorder. Um, it's also got another SDI out for the monitor. So if you're running a Teradek or you're running like a first AC monitor, you can run another one and you can run custom LUTs to these monitors. So the C500 Mark II lets you monitor C-Log2. That was one of the biggest struggles when I was out shooting. I was trying to monitor the, the image in RAW but I was really just guessing because it'll give you a view assist, which is really nice. It'll show you like a Rec. 709 LUT on your camera of what the exposure is gonna look like, but it, is, it doesn't show, show you the full latitude. There's no waveform monitor either. So that's another thing that it made it really difficult. So a lot of the times I was guessing and we would call out exposures. Okay, like okay, you're at ISO 400 or ISO 800 shutter 150th and, and we're just sort of trying to match but like in a situation where you, you have to set the exposure yourself you really want to rely on those things another thing that the 1dx mark III doesn't have is it doesn't have false color that's something that's built into the c500 mark ii it makes it really easy to ga gauge your exposure and see if you're going to be clipping any of your highlights or maybe you're underexposing your skin tones and so those are the things that get more and more important the bigger set the bigger types of sets that you go on you can't be missing your exposure. So a C500 Mark II is really designed for those exact types of situations, whereas the 1DX Mark III is not. In terms of body design, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the 1DX Mark III. I had the 1DX Mark II before that. Uh, the one thing that I, I would say about it is it's really set up great if you're like, uh, you know, like a travel filmmaker or something like that, because it's got this super durable, rugged, weather weatherproof body. And if you're getting blasted by like water and rain or like from a waterfall or something like that, you never have to worry because that thing's super weather sealed and the C500 Mark II is not. Okay, so this is how I was shooting the majority of the time with the 1DX Mark III. I had a Ninja 5 recorder on top of the camera and this allowed me to tilt the screen and monitor. Now, the biggest problem is for me, I'm a pretty tall guy, I'm actually 6'5", so what I always have to do is I feel like a giraffe at the watering hole like trying to bend over and see the image on like a little three inch LCD on the 1DX Mark III. Uh, it doesn't tilt, it doesn't flip. So for a videographer or a filmmaker, or a DP, whatever you want to call yourself, the main thing is you got to be able to see what you're filming. So that's why I attached this Ninja 5. Now that seems like a great solution in theory. And this is why I always say to test your stuff out before you actually um, use it on a paid shoot. I ended up finding out for whatever reason, even though this cable right here is a $60 cable from Atomos, um, it's supposed to be rated for 4K 60. It doesn't work. So, you know, maybe you guys, if you know in the comments, you guys could let me know where you can find a cable that actually works at 4K 60. It would work at 4K 24, it'd work at 4K 30, and then we'd flip it over to 4K 60 and I'd completely lose signal. Um, so then I'd have to literally yank the cable out and then start recording off the back of the camera LCD. So these are some of the things that like you don't have to deal with when you have a professional cinema camera that's designed from the factory to work like a professional cinema camera. Um, and you're not sort of creating these extra solutions to try to figure it all out. Um, and again, that's, that's why I always try, this, try out my gear on shoots that are not paid. So um, it's nothing mission critical, so to speak, you know? I mean, I could, I could get by, I don't have uh, you know talent on set or a director asking me, hey Griff, you ready to roll? You know, and I'm kind of like, uh, no. So, you know, again, that's, that's why it's really important to do that. Okay, so another thing, uh, the 1DX Mark III, um, in terms of autofocus, it's got both better and worse autofocus. I talked about this in my C500 Mark II review a little bit already, so I don't wanna talk about it too much. Maybe check that video out if you're interested in seeing more about the C500 Mark II in like a little more in depth. 
but the 1DX Mark III has this really amazing one touch autofocus. So you just literally touch on the back of the screen and then it starts tracking the subject right away. Um, it's also got some several other new modes. Um, I haven't explored those quite as much, but let's just say in terms of autofocus, it's better most of the time. Now, why I say most of the time? Because the C500 Mark II along with the C200 have this, this one special mode and it's called face only autofocus. Now this is a mode that I actually use quite a bit. If you're doing something like, like I am right now, um, I have it on face only autofocus because I can just sit down and I know if I duck out a frame, then it's not gonna jump to the background. And with the 1DX Mark III, it doesn't have a mode like that. So if you're say like uh, shooting a skateboard or like someone riding motocross or something like that, you're gonna have a much easier time tracking that person with the 1DX Mark III but in terms of like an interview setup, exactly like the one like we're doing right now, it's you'd be a little bit better off with the C200 or the C500 Mark II autofocus settings on face only autofocus. Okay, so last category. Is the C500 Mark II really worth 10 grand more than the 1DX Mark III? Um, I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money, but I'll simply share some of my thoughts and hopefully that'll help you make the decision if it's worth it or not. I think the real question you have to ask yourself is, do you wanna be a DP um, or do you wanna be like a filmmaker or are you someone who's more just like uh, shooting photo, shooting video, you're a content creator? Um, because these are different cameras really designed for different people. They're both amazing cameras. Um, I own the 1DX Mark III and chances are I'm probably gonna buy the, the C500 Mark II. Um, they're just designed for different things though. I mean, if you show up on set with the C500 Mark II, it's a cinema camera. It's really got that X factor. Everybody that sees that camera on set is gonna go, okay, wow, hey, he's legit. That's a, that's a legit camera. I know he means business. You know, he's probably done this before. Uh, no one's gonna ask you if like, oh, can you take my picture? Like, it's a cinema camera. People understand it, they get it. Um, you know, if you show up on set and you've got something like a 1DX Mark III, like, it's an amazing camera. Image quality wise, it's gonna get you there for sure. But if you're doing like a ton of client work like on a regular basis, you're gonna be a lot better off with the C500 Mark II. Um, you know, whether or not it's worth 10K, I think the real question you have to ask yourself is how much do you bill per hour? And then how many hours is it gonna save? So if you extrapolate that time over the course of a year or two years, however long you think you're gonna use that camera, then you know, you need to do the math problem and figure out if that's worth it for you. Um, I can tell you for me personally, I'm gonna be using the 1DX Mark III and my C200s on a job for a TV show that we're shooting in about a week and a half. And I can tell you at the end of the day, what I have to do is I have to take all my CFast cards, plug them into my computer. I actually run two computers at once and I have to transcode all that media to ProRes before I hand it to my director. So that's part of the deal. Um, ProRes is sort of like an industry standard codec. And with the C500 Mark II, I would not have to do that. I could just take the XFAVC files, hand them off straight away, and at the end of the day, when, I, when I'm done working my eight or 10 hour day, I can go to sleep or just go chill. Uh, I don't have to worry about doing extra work at the end of the day. So that for me is like the one main reason that I'm super interested in the C500 Mark II. I would say that 1DX Mark III is really aimed at, uh, obviously the professional photographer, but I mean, they really put a lot of pro level features in this camera. I think it's an outstanding B or C camera for someone that owns a C500 Mark II or maybe you even own a C200. If you're like a content creator, a travel filmmaker, um, someone who jumps between photo and video, the 1DX Mark III is like such an amazing camera. It's by far right now the best uh, photo video hybrid camera out. So, I mean, that's really, in my opinion, that it's a home run if, if you're that kind of person that does that type of work. Anyways, that's it for me today, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking this video out. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Armando's got a video coming out and it's gonna be the C500 Mark II versus the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And then he also told me he's gonna have another video coming out where he compares the C500 Mark II and his video is gonna take a more in-depth look at the 10-bit 422 um, of the C500 Mark II versus the 10-bit from the 1DX Mark III. So if you're interested, make sure you go check Armando's channel. So thanks for stopping by and checking this video out. And if you guys are interested in seeing more camera comparisons and videos like this, uh, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.